Welcome to A Magical Life, Health, Wealth and Weight Loss. I'm your host, Magic Barclay, Lead Practitioner at Holistic Natural Health Australia and number one best-selling author. In this podcast, I aim to give you practical tips on how to accelerate and sustain your health, increase your financial, spiritual and emotional wealth and to look at something that haunts many of us needlessly, weight loss. In some episodes, I'll have guests available to give you even more tips, but in others, the floor is yours. Drop us a line at A Magical Life Podcast on Facebook and let me know what you would like to know more about. Now, sit back and enjoy, because it is time for you to create and truly discover a magical life. Welcome back to A Magical Life. I'm your host, Magic Barclay, and today I'm joined by Karen Sates. Now, Karen is a former spiritual healer and realized that her clients were not getting better. She was frustrated that she could not deliver the results her clients wanted, even though she was trying lots of different healing modalities and coaching techniques. Karen knew that she also wasn't getting the changes she wanted in her life, She secretly lacked any confidence in her ability to change. Her adult life had stalled. In a fresh new search for answers, Karen found the missing pieces that would ultimately transform her life and those of her clients. There is something very profound in owning that she is the problem in her life. This awareness pushed her to confront herself and get serious about herself and life. Karen is now fulfilled and teaches others the same journey she has taken to find herself and be happy. She calls herself the happiness mentor and teaches in an online happiness course for women called Awakened Grace. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Magic. It's wonderful to be here. It's so great to have you here. And I think as women, certainly as you know, our kids get a bit older and don't need us as much or life changes are happening, we kind of do lose ourselves. And I've spoken about this on the podcast a few times. And so what did that feel like when you realized Mm -hmm. that you weren't getting the results that you wanted? Mm -hmm. And kind of how did you find where you are now? To be honest, because I was doing so much magic to help other people heal, and try to find the answers within themselves to life. And I couldn't do that for myself, even though I pretended I was doing that and fooled myself and fooled others as well. Really deep down, I felt like a fraud or an imposter that I was teaching all these things. Yet I still felt very insecure in myself. I often say that I felt like a child trapped in an adult woman's body and no idea how to really navigate life from being grounded in myself and knowing who I was. It was a very empty experience and one where I was often questioning, is this going to be my life? I'm, I'm doing all these things. I'm a yoga teacher. I was a Reiki master. I taught meditation. I was a shamanic practitioner. And it, I thought I'm doing all these things. I'm doing all the things I thought I was supposed to do to have a connection to myself, to be spiritual, to be emotionally grounded in myself. And yet I still feel like a mess in my own life. And is it ever going to get better? Or is this just going to be my life? Like, is this all there is? Not to mention the, the pressure to keep up the facade and the pressure to paint on a happy face and make it look like I had my life figured out, make it look like I had me figured out when really I was grasping in my life. I think many of us feel that way and we just don't feel brave enough to say, you know, hey, something's not right here. So my hat is off to you for doing that. Now, I ask the same three questions of all of my guests and everyone gives me such different answers that, you know, I just think it brings so much value to myself and to the listeners. Mm -hmm. So here comes your first one. 
what can your expertise do to accelerate health, not just physical, but also emotional and spiritual health? The best place to start with this is actually you had asked in in your last question to me a little bit about my journey to get to where I was and really just sharing from my own experience. So my expertise is in happiness and in emotional intelligence. And for me in my life, which I know many of us can relate to, I was constantly pursuing relationships, life experiences, whether that was graduating from college, getting married, starting a business, trying to check all the boxes in life in the pursuit of happiness, in the pursuit of having emotional, spiritual, and physical health, and then never having it. And and here's what I learned. And and here's what I teach my clients and, and the people that I get the privilege to work with is that happiness is not about a feeling. It is not about the emotion of being happy. Happiness is about feeling good about who you are and finding your value in yourself, finding your meaning and purpose in yourself. And so happiness becomes a state of being where we have a deep acceptance of ourselves and a deep acceptance of our lives where we just want to be who we are and we just want the life that we have. And we often think once I get the emotional, the spiritual, the physical, the financial figured out, then I'll finally be happy and I'll be fulfilled and I will feel whole in my life and I will have meaning and purpose. But for me in my journey, it's actually been the other way around that as I've learned to embrace life's challenges and to make conscious choices in my life, to put myself out into life, to grow and learn, to become the best version of myself and embrace the ups and downs as the obstacles that I need to grow and learn to feel good about myself, to value myself and find my meaning and purpose in me. That's where I feel in control of myself. I feel in control of my emotional state. I feel connected to myself. And that's where we find our connection to our spirituality. When I feel good about myself, that's reflected in my body and in my health and not feeling good about how I look. I think that's really important for for myself as a woman and other women listening. We often confuse feeling good about ourselves as feeling good about how we look. And feeling good about ourselves is a much deeper experience than just feeling good about how we look. That feeling good about ourselves is feeling good about who we are because of the choices and decisions that we make in our lives to grow and learn that reflect our character and reflect the integrity of the kind of person that we want to be in our lives. And in that, we develop internal self-value, which is then how we are happy and how we are in control of our emotional state. And it's from that place that then we feel good about ourselves internally. And then that gets reflected in our physical health. We feel in control of our emotional state and we feel a connection to who we are. And in my personal journey, not saying this is for everyone, but as I found a connection to myself, that's where I actually found a connection and a relationship with God and felt connected to that, which I feel is, is bigger than who I am. So for me and my expertise, that all starts with happiness and learning how to develop high emotional intelligence, where we are in control of our emotional state by accepting the reality of life and really using life as a way to grow and learn about ourselves. Thanks for that. And look, we talk about wealth here as well. And people think wealth is just the financial, but Mm. you've touched already on the personal and emotional wealth. How do you think they all tie in? And what are your top three tips to creating wealth? Mm -hmm. To me, there is no greater wealth than the experience we get to have of knowing who we are and being connected to ourselves and learning how to be true to who we are in our lives. And for me, and, and, and others, that is a journey in itself through life. 
But if I don't have myself, I have nothing because everything in my life just becomes an empty experience of grasping at people and things outside of me to fill me up and give me that wealth, the physical, financial, emotional, but it's an empty experience because there's no foundation of me to actually experience in that. So when I have a connection with myself and you have a connection with yourself, then that allows you to make the choices and decisions in your life that are in alignment with who you are and what you want to experience in your life, not society's standards, not what you think you should be doing or what you're hearing from others you're supposed to be doing, but making choices based on the kind of life you want to create for yourself and how you want to grow and learn in your life. And then that feeds each of those areas so that we are experiencing wealth. And that might not look like millions of dollars in the bank account, but it's perfect for you because you are embracing the life that you have and really growing and learning from it and getting the most of yourself out of your life. And then it catapults you in in all those other areas of what you want to create for yourself and what's important to you in your life. So my three tips to create the wealth of who you are so that you can create wealth in other areas that are important to you are really more perspectives and life-changing perspectives that you can take and apply to your life. In the first perspective, that has been crucial for me in my own journey and what I teach others is that I am the problem in my life. Therefore, I am the solution. So when we blame others and point the finger out to our past, to our upbringing, to our parents, to the experiences or challenges or hardships that we've had in our lives, that that's the reason we're stuck. That's the reason we're struggling then we give our power and control away to our external world and we have no ability to change. It's only when we are willing, and this was a a turning point for me to really start to change in my life and really start to create a life that felt true to me and allow me to feel fulfilled and happy within myself as I had to see that I was the problem. And when I could see I was the problem, then I can make different choices, make different decisions, change my behaviors and create different outcomes in my life. And then when the things that I thought were what caused me to be stuck or caused me to struggle in my life, whether that was my upbringing or past relationships or men or my experiences in school, then those things all became gifts and things to learn from in my life rather than these things I thought were holding me back and keeping me from the life that I wanted. So when you are able to see yourself as the problem, you take back that power and control and you become the solution. The second perspective is I am in control of my emotional state and the experience of myself. So this is linked a little bit to the first one that when I think It's my outside world or my external world causing me to feel emotionally unstable or emotionally all over the place or not in control of the of the different areas you talk about the personal, financial, emotional wealth. Then again, I give my power away. But what we can realize is that when we embrace life for what it is, we embrace the challenges then we actually have the power to choose how we want to respond to life instead of constantly reacting or constantly hiding and playing small because we're scared of life or we're scared of of what's going to happen to us. And we can actually be in control of how we respond and there and be in control of our emotional state and be in control of the experience of who we are. We can't control life. We can't control the things that are going to come and that are going to happen, but we can't control how we want to show up, the choices and decisions we want to make, the perspective we want to take and and how we want to respond. And and that in itself is, to me, is, is huge wealth of who we are as humans and our capacity to be adaptable and be resilient. The third perspective 
is that I am a product of my choices, not a victim of my circumstances. So we have two different paths we can take in life. We can take the path of our environment and our circumstances have created the life that we have, have created the struggles and challenges that we have, which again, keeps us stuck and being a victim to life and a victim to our past, a victim to our circumstances. Or we can choose to have another perspective, that it's my choices and decisions that have led me to have the very life that I have. And it doesn't mean that I've chosen all the the life experiences that have happened out of my control, but I've made choices in how I've responded to them. And I've made choices to be in the relationships I'm in, to have the career that I have, to have the different experiences that I have. And then that puts us in control. So that's the third. I'm a product of my choices, not a victim of my circumstances. Some great answers there. And look, we do talk about weight loss here. Many people Mm -hmm. battle their weight. Have you ever battled yours? (laughs) And in your journey, what was the, I guess, the impetus to winning the battle? Of course. Yes. (laughs) I have always struggled with weight and my weight issues have been and being overweight and always struggling with food and emotionally eating. And I often will say, you know, I know since I was five that I really struggled with my weight when I started going to school and I realized that I was bigger, not only weight wise, but also um, height wise. I was taller than everyone until until I was about 13. (laughs) And I also had extra weight on. And before that, even though I'll joke (laughs) that I've struggled with weight my whole life because I was 11 pounds when I was born. (laughs) And I often say, bless my mom, (laughs) um, because she did not have a C-section and I I don't know how she did that. So I always give her lots of extra love when I see her, but I've struggled with weight my whole life. And I think, especially as women, we've all struggled with weight, whether it's being underweight or overweight or constantly feeling pressured uh, by the standards of society and what we're told is the ideal weight of what we're supposed to look like. So we really, it's a common issue that we all have. And my weight has been an incredible teacher to help me get to know who I am. So in the vein of the perspectives that I gave in the previous question, I really had to see that I was the problem with my weight. And for most of my life, I blamed my genetics. I grew up in a clean your plate household. So I blamed that. I come from hardy stock and blamed my family. And the ideals I learned growing up were that um, healthy eating wasn't really taught. Um, My parents were always on diets. So I had a lot of um, a lot of story built up around why I struggled with my weight, even as an adult. And that was keeping me very stuck because there was no solution in that. So I was very fortunate. um, And everything I'm sharing today has been what I've learned through my own experience, but with the help of my mentor. And my mentor really helped me to look within, not in a way to beat myself up, but to really understand myself that my weight, and and I see it, and I know this as my experience now, that my weight was unconsciously something I was doing to myself and putting weight on to perpetuate not feeling good about myself so that I could hide from life. And what I realized is that my weight was my excuse to get out of just about anything in my life. And it was a huge way for me to hide and protect myself, have like a physical barrier of protection because I was so scared of life. And so now I understand that It's really when I learn how to feel good about myself on the inside and have structure around food and parent myself within that structure to feel good about myself, that I naturally am at the weight that is healthy for me and feels good for me. My trigger to really take this path and learn this for myself was my marriage and that 
I saw how much, like I said, I put weight on to really get out of just about anything in my life and, and hide. And one of the areas that I got to hide from and having weight on was in my marriage. I pushed away my husband and I pushed away sex. And I got to a place where the pain of being there and being so shut down, being married to a wonderful man, having previously enjoyed sex, and then put up these huge walls after getting married and no longer wanted to be vulnerable and really just push that away. And it was very, a very, very painful place to be because I couldn't understand what had happened. It was like a light switch went off on me. And the more I shut down to sex, the more I shut down to my husband, the more weight that I put on. And I really didn't feel good about myself. And I didn't want to be there anymore. And I knew it was time to really get honest with myself and, and take a flashlight out and look at this area. And it, now I feel very grateful to be at a place where I can accept myself and who I am in my body to know that I am never going to be in my frame and my body type. I'm never going to be the women I see in the magazines and be skinny, but I'm at a weight that is comfortable for me and that I can accept myself and that I know is healthy for me. And I want other women to know that that, that is possible. And it, it really starts with working with who you are on the inside and feeling good about yourself on the inside. Well said. Now, Karen, let's talk about being a happiness coach, what mm -hmm. do you think people need to hear? And is there something that they can take away from this episode mm -hmm. today to get started on finding true happiness? Well, the one thing that we all continue to search for as humans is happiness. And the problem is in our pursuit of happiness is that we are constantly looking for it in all the wrong places. Like I said earlier, we look to check all the boxes of what we think we need to accomplish in our life that will bring us happiness. So again, those examples you know, can be getting a degree, getting married, having children, getting a career and getting the promotions and the recognition and the awards. It could be buying a home, taking vacations, having work-life freedom where you you know, work from home or, uh, you know, what's really popular here in the, in the U S and I'm sure other parts of the world too, is living from the road and working from the road and, and traveling through and around in an RV or a van. And we think that those types of things are going to make us happy. And we're constantly looking for what we think is missing. That is going to complete us and complete our lives and bring us happiness. And it's a trap that our human pursuit of happiness and how we go about it, especially I believe that we all know and have heard a million times that no one and no thing can make you happy. Yet we all fall in the trap of looking to people and things outside of us to make us happy. And it's so ingrained and so universal that we can't even see it. And we don't realize that everything that we are going after in our lives is in this pursuit of happiness, of feeling fulfilled, feeling that our lives have meaning and purpose, but never getting there and then constantly looking for the next thing. So our pursuit of happiness is actually our unhappiness. And how I define being unhappy is always wanting what you don't have always wanting what you don't have, always thinking this is missing. When this happens, then I'll be happy. When this, this, and this get together and all is good, then I'll have everything I need and I'll be happy. And I want the listeners to know that that's a trap <laughs> and that there's another way. And that's why I redefine happiness as not a feeling, not joy, not pleasure, not an emotion, but learning how to make choices and decisions for yourself in your life to grow and learn about who you are so that you are building internal self-value and that your meaning and purpose comes from you instead of the people and things in your life. 
and that being happy is where you only want to be you and you only want the life that you have. And from that place, you can pick experiences. You can pick things that you want in your life, but not from a place of thinking that that's going to fulfill you. That's going to give you meaning and purpose. But from a place of, I want this experience to get to know more of me. Inevitably, people will say, well, gosh, Karen, that sounds really selfish. But that's not the perspective I'm coming from. When we are pulling from our relationships to fill us up and give us our meaning and purpose, that's where we actually become selfish because we need people to be something for us, to feel okay, and to provide us that meaning and purpose that we are lacking in ourselves. When we can become our own meaning and purpose and become our own value, then we can actually appreciate the people in our lives, accept them for who they are, have unconditional love because we no longer need them to fill us. And that's what happiness is all about. Thanks for explaining it like that. I think, you know, many of us chase happiness, but like I said, we're looking in the wrong spots. So I really do love your explanation. Now, Karen, we love freebies here. What can you Mm -hmm. offer the listeners as a freebie and where can they find that? Of course. So I have a definitive guide to happiness. That is a, a free masterclass to go in depth to some of the things that I talked about on this episode and to really have a clear cut path and roadmap of how to make those choices and decisions in your life, to be able to grow and learn, to connect with yourself and really find your meaning and purpose in you and become your own value, begin to develop internal self-value. And if any of the listeners would like that, then you can email me and I will send that to you. I'm in the process of, of getting a place that you can go and sign up for that, but it's not quite uh, ready yet. But if you send me an email and I'm sure magic can put that in the show notes, then I will send you a definitive guide to happiness that is based and centered around everything we got to talk about in this episode. Great. Now listeners, you can find Karen at her website, which is www.karensites.com. So that's K A R. Y-N-S-E-I-T-Z dot com. And there you will be able to contact Karen for that wonderful freebie. Karen, thank you so much for joining us. I've really enjoyed this episode and really looking at happiness from within. I think that's just such a game changer for all of us. Well, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to, to share and talk about happiness from this perspective and thank you for all that you're doing and, and sharing with others different perspectives on how to really feel good and emotionally, spiritually, and, and personally connected in their lives. Thank you. And listeners, thank you so much for your time. Coming up in our next episode, Gretchen Shanks is talking to us and she's actually a sex and dating coach. So she's going to be talking about intimacy and body image and dating and a whole lot of other stuff. So one to look forward to. Again, thank you for your time. Go forth and create your magical life. Thanks for listening today. Please subscribe to hear future episodes, leave a review and share this podcast. You can follow us on Facebook at A Magical Life Podcast or at Holistic Natural Health Australia. That's holistic with a W. You can find us on Instagram at Holistic Natural Health or at www.holisticnaturalhealth.com.au. That's where you'll access all sorts of articles, freebies and more.